Hello, this is my sermon from Sunday the 3rd of May. Following years of austerity, a horrendous epidemic swept through the city, killing thousands of the weakened population. There was no medicine to fight it and no defence against it. The city was Chester in 1647, soon after the end of the Civil War. When the plague arose, one family believed they could stay alive if they and their servants isolated themselves in their house until it was over. They were right. Thousands died, but they survived. They showed their thanks to God by inscribing it right across the front of their house in 9 Watergate Street. It's still there. It said, God's providence is mine inheritance. Similar are the words of gratitude we heard earlier in Psalm 23. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Words from John's Gospel. We are now in lockdown, living in isolation, locked in houses, the gate shut. And how do you feel about that? I've got to the stage of rather enjoying this amazing opportunity to tackle outstanding jobs, do gardening, a bit of a first for me, reflect, read, slow down and listen to the birds. I know it's not like this for everyone and the potential for isolation leading to worsening mental health problems is therefore very high. We're facing an unseen and insidious enemy. The changes in everyday life are a challenge for us all, especially for families with young children. Some people are struggling more than others in dealing with the anxieties and uncertainties. But as people of faith, we are reassured, especially in the words of Psalm 23, where we are given the assurance that the Lord is my shepherd and therefore I shall not be in want. I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. I could end the sermon here, because those words, I believe, are all we need. One of the most powerful aspects of our well-being is the knowledge that we are never alone. We are all living through this pandemic together. It's not about me, but we. As we are physically distanced from each other, I found more people saying hello as they pass. We remember John Donne's words that no man is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. And in the reading from Acts, we are told about the early church's sense of community. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They spent much time together and they broke bread at home. They also wrote letters to communicate, which is really just a slow form of Zoom. Today's gospel is not about the one lost sheep. It's about all the sheep in the sheepfold being cared for by the shepherd. That is every one of us. This is endorsed by the words of the Psalm. He guides me along the right path. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This knowledge gives us the confidence, not only to use our time creatively and spiritually for ourselves, but also to help others in whatever way we can. As Christians, we must remember that we all have the strongest companion. Whether introvert or extrovert, happy to be in solitude or slowly becoming stir-crazy, living alone, or coping with a bunch of demanding children, silent teenagers, elderly parents or grandparents, worrying about the future or excited about our surreal new world, or even facing the sad loss of friends or family. For us, God is always with us. He revives my soul, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So how do we people of faith live from inside the gate?
it may be easier for those of us who have more time on our hands, who are not juggling working from home with looking after children and homeschooling. Our journey at the moment is to try and discover those lush green pastures and still waters. In the reading, we heard that we are the sheep, safe in the fold, locked in our gate. Jesus, as well as being the good shepherd, is the gate, the closed door. Inside we are safe, we are shielded. Perhaps the voice of the stranger that we heard, as well as the thief and the bandit, are metaphorically our fears, anxieties and distractions, robbing us of equilibrium, peace and joy. We live in an age where even in total isolation we can find endless distractions and they can be fine to entertain us but they don't lead to still waters. Blaise Pascal, philosopher and theologian in the 17th century, remarked that human unhappiness is caused by an incessant need for distraction or diversion which he says, quote, arises from one single fact that man cannot stay quietly in his own chamber. He continues, as diversions come from outside, we are dependent and likely to be disturbed by a range of distractions which inevitably cause distress. One of my favorite talks given by Thomas Merton is called A Life Free From Care. Care here meaning worry. He is writing about life in the monastery, but I think we can make use of it at the moment too. He says that ideally in the monastery, you put away all care. In this current crisis, we may actually be in the equivalent of a monastic cell because we are in isolation. Obviously not if you've got three small children at home, like Michael and others, then a monastic cell is probably a dream. But we may be very much full of care, care for our health, care for our loved ones, care for the world, worrying about shopping. Where can I find bananas? What about flour? What shall I do? And why can't I make good use of this time? Merton would have been quite happy with this shutdown. When he arrived at his monastery at first, he said, the abbot locked the gate behind me and I was enclosed in the four walls of my new freedom. Let us embrace the sheepfold we find ourselves in, this communion in isolation, where in our monastic cell, we are blessed to do our spiritual work. This week, I'm suggesting that you say Psalm 23 every day as part of your spiritual practice. It's just a few verses, but it's powerful. It's a powerful reminder of our Christian faith and a wonderful prayer. Like that family in Chester over 350 years ago, we're in isolation. They thanked God for life and wrote it across their house. What will be your response? Amen.